So thank you all for coming. It's 520 um, for the um, May 7th, is it? Correct. The May 7th select board meeting. Um, we've got some guests here in the office, physical, and then we've got some people on the Zoom. So just remember if you want to speak or you have a question, just raise your physical hand or your virtual hand um, if you have a question. So the first order of business is approving the minutes of April 16th, 2024, regular meeting and the March 26th. Oh, are you making a motion? No, I'm making, I gotta, shouldn't you announce those people because she's gonna record off this? So she'll know uh, who's here. When I say she. Only if they speak. Yeah, only if they speak, I think we have to recognize them. Okay. Um, All right. Can you just get me a word? But if you want a motion, I'll do that too. Yeah, we can take a I just don't want to take my time to do that. I'd rather do it right now because it's fresh in my mind. Wow. Okay. And if I want to minimize it, how do I do that? Uh, right there. The yellow. Oh, the ye yellow? Yeah. This one? Okay. That'll, that'll minimize. First, and then, and then green the, will. Yep. And, and then then how do I get the back green? Down and, and just hit it again. Okay, and there it is. Okay, yep. Okay. So um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of April 16th? I have a revision to the meeting minutes, just a clarification. Um, underneath the section that talks about the communications from Mr. Goff, there was a statement in there that said that we, as the board, agreed that uh, Liz's comment was in support of his um his message and uh, the clarification would be that the board as a whole uh, agreed that Liz was not siding with uh, Mr. Goff in that communication. Oh. That's what you want to add is that... Um, I just want to change okay. that the board agreed that uh, Liz agreed with Mr. Goff to did not agree with Mr. Goff. Oh, to di so Liz did not agree with yes, Mr. Okay, correct. change language to the way it's currently written indicates that you okay you agreed with uh, side you basically sided with him. Okay, maybe Liz did not agree or disagree. Yeah, it was. It was not. It was just I wasn't there, taking. Uh, yeah. Further, there's a further statement yeah. in there that says that it wasn't. Um, it was just a, a recognition of the communication and not siding. Yes. With okay. It. Yep. Is everyone okay with that? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, so were we all here for the to be able to approve um, the special meeting on March 26th as well to add that in, or should we do that separate? We, let's just do it separate. Who approves the minutes of April 16th with this um, this slight change of, of the language about Liz not agreeing or disagreeing with Mr. Goff, but just a recognition? Okay. Um, is there a second? Okay. All those in favor. Okay, so Randy, right. um, okay, so Randy, right. okay, April 16th. No, mm -hmm. it's gonna be short. April, the March 26, 2024 special meeting. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make that motion. Okay, Vic moves. Uh, Vic moves, and is there a second? I will. Randy seconds. All those in favor of the March 26 minutes from the special meeting say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. 
So Randy also wanted to amend the agenda. Yeah, I'd like to uh, add uh, an executive session at the end of this meeting to discuss some personnel issues. Okay. Also? Yes, Sarah? Um, we have at 5.30 uh, Scott Gurley and Sue Warren. I wanted to add Hilton Deere and Steve Martin to the list of approving additional town voters for the town roads subcommittee. Okay. I thought Steve was already approved. I thought he was too. So adding additional members to the road sub subcommittee. Correct. Okay. I didn't know he wasn't on it. Yeah, I thought it's fine. We, we can talk about we it. We approved him prior to. But. Okay. So, um, all right. So we've made a few little amendments to the agenda. Um, approving the agenda for today, May seventh. I move we approve the agenda for Thank May Thank you, Vic. With the uh, amendment as stated. Okay. Approved with. Um, amendments with stated amendments not approved moved moved, yeah. moved by Vic with stated amendments is there a second I will okay all those in favor of the May 7th agenda with said amendments aye. say aye. aye 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 okay now, moving to, oh, we're right on time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we're not. 5.05. Whoops, I skipped it. P uh, PC Chair Sandy Levine to attend. Action possible to discuss revisiting the survey of residents of Middlesex Village about their interest in supporting a municipal water source. and. Sandy's here on Zoom, um, so Sandy, I will give you the floor. And she did pass along to us that survey that I hope everyone got a chance to look through. And we also have um, Mr. Bennett here, Russ Bennett, um, from the Galaxy of Yes. Yes. Uh, so Sandy, do you want to take it away? Um, sure. And Russ may be able to answer any questions folks have, but. I was around a year ago or so that I remember Galaxy of Yes folks came to a select board meeting and talked about the possibility of um, connecting the village to a water system that they would be developing on the former Colby property. And my recollection and the, the, the planning commission has been interested in in that project or that possibility as far as sort of overall planning for the village, my recollection is that the select board was interested in conducting a survey of the village residents to see if there was interest in potentially connecting to a water supply um, if it was if it was available. And um, the I think the folks with Galaxy of Yes came up with some possible questions. I worked with them on revising a survey, and that's the survey that you have in front of you. And then the flood happened, and I think this all, like many things in Middlesex and elsewhere in central Vermont, things just got set aside. And when I followed up just wondering what happened with that, I was told the survey did not go out. And since it's been a year, I thought it would be helpful to revisit it with the select board. Um, as I said, um, Russ Bennett can tell you more about where they are on the water system and the ins and outs of that. Um, we were, the planning commission was mostly just interested in if there was a possibility to see if there's interest within the village because a, a the potential for a water system in the village could be very helpful for future development in the village as well as um, fire protection and so on. Um, so with that, I don't know if the select board has other questions either about the survey or more questions about the water system. I think those are better directed at Russ. I would like to hear how the how you're going with the water system, Russ. 
Well, it runs downhill. Okay, um, yep. <laughs> um, since we last met, uh, we have been going through the state process of um, having the source. We have two wells, um, and we pump tested those wells over 96 hours on one, 72 hours on the other, um, which is what the state requires <coughs> to see what the yield is. Um, and so they've approved the source. At, uh, at the moment, at for about twenty-five thousand, three or four, five hundred gallons. That how much? Twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Twenty-five k gallons per minute. Uh, a day. Sorry. Oh, per day. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say it's a lot. <laughs> of gallons of water. No, no, that would be. A, that would be. It's like woo. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the daily um, take. Between the two wells. Between the two okay. wells. And the wells are deep. One is 700 and the other is 670 feet. We had, uh, after we started our pump test, we dropped our pumps at about 450 and we were going to drop them lower. There were some little rocks that sort of came in and made it more difficult. We didn't want to break our pump and we didn't want to start over. So we just used the top 450. Um, I don't get what that means. You use top. In other 50. words, we didn't draw down against the, the fullness of the well. Both wells that we have are over the top without uh, a cap on them. I see. So it's uh, like a gallon and a half per bush um, in each one of those um, that you have in storage, and it re and they replenish very quickly. Okay. So we we went the conservative way, which is fine. Um, so that's what the state has um, okay. allowed us to draw against those wells. And we monitor, there's only a couple of wells within 2,000 feet of those wells. And we monitored those wells and had no, um, no impact on them. Do you mean you have more than two wells? We have two wells yep. on the property. And then um, we are, the, uh, the criteria is we have to check of the neighbors, with okay. Or springs or whatever within the 2,000 foot radius of okay. those wells. Gotcha. We, do, we put monitoring things in, in everybody's well. 2,000 square it. feet or foot? 1,000 foot radius, linear feet. Okay. Radius, yeah. Um, okay. And so we, for the state, they wanted to know, oh, what are we going to do with the water? And we said, well, we don't know exactly what we're going to do with the water, but um, we told them that we would probably do around 50 units of housing, and we have some amount of square footage of um, commercial things. But we really don't know. We have a phase one that we're about to start permitting, applying for a permit for, which is mostly which is 12 units, maybe, triplexes, um, with market rate and subsidized rate. Um, a daycare for 150, um, another sort of maker space, um, and that's all in the close-in corner. Um, that, so that, that gives us sort of a placeholder, and that matches up to about 25,000 gallons a day, and our uh, leach field, where we think our leach field can go, which we've done foot testing for, uh, Stone Environmental said, without any pretreatment, we're good for 30,000 gallons a day. Um, with pretreatment, that would double that. So we don't know what we're doing out beyond where we are. We're learning the land as we go. So, so with this 2,000, so uh, I'm sorry, with these 50 units, the daycare, a maker yeah. spe space, yeah. They're saying 25,000 gallons per day. Yeah. How would then that be enough water to get added to the town? Um, because we can drill another well. We can knock those obstacles out of those wells. We can retest them over a longer period of time. Um, the thing that we don't, um, the thing that we know is that we tested for every chemical and mineral that it was painted over um, that we could. And we're under the mark for everything as far as needing to do any treatment, with one exception, which is a small amount of radium, which is easy to do. Um, 
The other interesting thing or great thing from our standpoint is we had the water tested to see how old it is. And it's between 60 and 70 years old when it comes out of the really? um, pipe. Which means it's a, long, it's a huge aquifer and it's a long way away ah. that we're tapping into. And the other thing is that there's no PFAS. So this is water that's going to take a while to get polluted by something. Um, because PFAS is, I mean, it's not a funny issue. It's serious across the yeah. state and across the country. And you've, uh, and you've measured the water and it doesn't have There's any. That's zero. cool. Uh, I mean, we spent a lot of money testing for everything that we could think of. Yep. Um, as opposed to the opposite. Um, so we have a good source. We know that we can expound upon it. And we can also, uh, one of the things I'm going to do with Craig Jewett, who you guys will probably remember, he was here know, a year and a half ago or so. He was with Otter Creek at the time, but he's moved yep. to another engineering firm. Um, he and I are going to walk the land next week to see where we would put storage uphill from where our wells are so that we add to our head pressure um, for every good reason. Um, and uh, storage will give us buffer to allow more water because we're not going to use so space space for water storage. Yeah, we want water storage. So I don't know whether it's 500,000 gallons or 200,000 gallons or a million gallons. But um, what we want to do is look at oh, what all those options are. Okay. Um, I think you know our position hasn't really changed, which is we know we need water. We know we're going to build a water system. We know it's going to be expensive. All that kind of jazz. And without knowing what the desire on, on the town's part, it, it seems to us that it would be, we would be remiss if we didn't offer to try and find a way to work together if that was the right thing. So as I recall, Craig had said our system would probably cost us around two and a half million bucks, two to two and a half million bucks, and a municipal system that would service from the uh, crossing of the Winooski, you know, the, the end of Middlesex yeah. along Route 2, down to Route 100B or so, would probably be around 12 million, 10 to 12 million bucks. So and to access the other, another water source for a municipal would cost about 12 million? Uh, it would cost, that would be the total cost, including our cost. The incremental for the town portion would, be, would be 10 say million. 10 million. Okay, gotcha, eight, gotcha, eight gotcha. Eight okay, million, so. Something like that. So. Uh, one of the things, we know that, a few things we know, which are sort of rough stuff, is we can get by on a six or an eight inch yeah. uh, pipe. But the municipal system would want to go to 12 inch pipe. And that's a lot more money. <laughs> so it, it wouldn't be in our best interest to put in a 12 inch pipe if it wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, so what, I sort of think is if there's desire, um, we don't have an idea about what would we want for it or how would it work or what would be a fair thing or would we do, would we do donation on some level and then make a deal for water to ourselves. I think oh, the opportunity is pretty much wide open as far as we're concerned. Um, but it would be a pity to lose that because if you guys can have infrastructure, water, you can control where you think it should be used. So you could say, in simplistic terms, where this system is going to service this area and we want to have X amount of housing in it, we want some amount that's low income or middle class or whatever words you want. And you can create rules and linkage that say, you know, the first guy with the most money doesn't get to use it all. Uh, some percentage of how it's used would need to be used for things that would match your goals. Um, and then the other part um, that I think would be advantageous, we're going to do it anyway up there, um, is we'll have hydrants and um, sprinkler buildings. Um, and if you had a municipal water system, you would be able to have hydrants 
and sprinkle of buildings, and, and you would then get a different quality of um, developer um, that would want that could develop multi-level, multi-family, multi-business kinds of things. And then you know we sort of look at the area of middle size and go, well, there's really not that much room here. Um, what we did, we people in my office did. Um, we looked at the size, the acreage of, from Route 100 B or a little bit down there to the Winooski, and it's the same size as um, Waitsfield and Arizona. So if you begin to think about, there's that much, now of course Waitsfield doesn't have, and that's not including the interstate, but you know, that's sort of a negative um, for backing up against for certain kinds of things. Um, anyway, it just seems like We'd be, we wouldn't be being good neighbors, we wouldn't be being good citizens if we didn't come to you and say, there's an opportunity to help, um, to be partners in some way without any preconceived notions as to what that would be. Okay, anyone else have any questions for Russ? Or Sandy? Um, I just want to make one comment about the um, survey. Mm -hmm. um, I the survey. My recollection is that it's going to just people in the town, correct? You mean residents of I'm sorry, the village. Those those people that would be served yeah, people in the village, by, right? Potentially served yeah. by the system, right? Yeah, served by the system, right? And I have a suggestion that if you're using like Survey Monkey, that um, you ask a question like, do you work or live in the village? And if they say no, they get booted out of the survey because this survey will get around to other people who don't live and won't understand. It's not clear that this is just for townspeople, I mean, for village people. Um, because a lot of people are going to have an opinion about this that don't live in the village, right? Um, so, and I also wonder, I mean, I do think that on a, I mean, obviously this is not going to happen overnight, but that other people in town are going to have an opinion and are going to want to be able to weigh in on, on this as well, whether or not this is an investment for the town. Yes, Sandy. Yeah, my, my recollection when you, when you all talked about this earlier, um, there had been, and Peter re will remember this better than I, that there was an opportunity to have a village water system some years ago, like maybe even 20 years ago or so. Correct. And there was a, um, you know, a survey or folks asked the folks in the village and they said, no, we don't want it. We don't want to pay for it. And so this was more, I mean, don't, let's not go further until we even know if folks in the village would even be interested in hooking up to a water system because it wouldn't be free. You're going to have to pay for the water, you know, anyway. That said, since whatever's happened, you know, over the last 20 years, there's been some new building in town. There have been some issues with septic. There's in, been some issues with the suitability of the drinking water that is now in the village. So uh, there, I, I don't know the answer to the question, but it seems that it would be, it would behoove the, the town to find out are folks in the village now interested, you know, going forward, if this is a larger investment for the town, obviously you need to reach out more broadly than just the people in the village. But it seems, and what my understanding what the select board thought before, a good place to start is, is there interest in the village in hooking up to a water system if that was available? Okay. And then the other thing about the survey um, that I had a couple concerns about, one was um, the sort of estimated cost. And I imagine that that estimated cost is based more on like the city of Barrie where there are thousands of people sharing a water source. And, and I'm not sure how the town pays, and we're not even getting to how the town pays, but is it, does it, does the person's yeah. bill have nothing to do with payment or, or how no. much it costs? Um, the cost, uh, there's no, there's almost no way to know today what the cost would be. Um, however, the the estimated cost was in the survey was presented as a range based on what the cost is for water systems in the in central Vermont. I think it's in Washington County. 
So yes, it's Barrie, it's Montpelier, but there's a number of smaller water systems in that area as well. So it's, okay. uh, you know, it's not like the entire state that has a different range of costs. Um, it was just to get to, to provide a ballpark of what it, what it would be. And, you know, you would know a cost before you um, move, move further, but it was just to not to say, would you sign up at any cost? Um, it was to provide some range of what a cost would be based on what it is elsewhere in the, in the area. Sandy, is, am I understanding you correct in the fact that uh, you're using uh, neighboring area cost, but not necessarily correcting that for the population that would be served here? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yes, Russ. A um, couple of thoughts. General, uh, I can't speak for people, anybody who lives here, although a number of people have called to say, can we get water? Because uh, not everybody is enamored of going to clean out the spring or whatever that kind of stuff is. One of the things that uh, having been involved with the water system in Waitsfield when I was doing a lot of, you know, your side of the table stuff there, um, is normally, usually you can get 80% of the cost of a water system from the state and the feds, and you have to come up with the 20, and then that's really what the people argue about. It's like, okay, who, why should all the taxpayers pay for that? It's only going to benefit people down there. Um, I, I, think, I take a slightly broader view of myself, which is we're downtown and the things that it has in it are part of what your community are. And so it, this citizen says I'm, I would be happy to contribute in my own town. Um, but what I imagine, without getting into the weeds, you know, I have a partner as well who's, um, who has good trust in what we do, um, would be to try and, if we're going to have to spend near to 20% what it would be, and we were then be, going to become a part of it, and we could come up with some longer term arrangement, uh, that might make it be that you're, you wouldn't have to come up with that money. We could use that money to become part of the system, and then, you know, depending on who operates that, is it the town, is it uh, Galaxy of Yes, is it an independent um, water management company, something like that. The state really is working hard to eliminate a lot of the water systems that pre-exist um, to meet today's standards and all, you know, whatever health standards there are. So that's, that might be helpful. As I think about it, I'm not going to say, oh yeah, we'll put up two million bucks, um, but we can we can see the longer term and figure out that there's probably a way of, if um, willing people all have the same goal in, in mind that we can probably figure that out, and that gives you an opportunity that other towns don't have. So you're saying that that the state. If, if a municipal water system costs $12 million, the state will pay for 80% of it? The state and federal money is generally adds up to it. And adds I would up want to, to talk to, you know, there are people that do this. That's yeah. what they do for a living is, is get these things. Okay. Um, but in general, nobody's going to, if they have to do 100%, it's not going to happen. Right. It's gen and there's still our and other money available. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, and some of these other towns that have gotten money are now having to turn it back in because they're not able to um, realize their project. So this is sort of a, a possible unique moment to take advantage of. Um, and if we try and are not successful, successful at coming up with a municipal system, that's not the worst thing that ever happened. The worst thing would be if we didn't try and then wish we had. Yeah, in my view. yeah, when we talked about this before, the 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 thought was that if it, if it was an 80 percent 80 state or federal money for it, 
the 20% match could be would be about the amount that the Galaxy of Yes folks would be putting into their water system anyway. Um, and that that could, could be part of a contribution towards the 20% match. Um, you know, and then the, the municipality would take over running of the system. So it would be the ongoing operating costs of the system that it would be what the town would be basically on the hook for. Again, these are, you know, um, estimates. Yeah. I, you know, until you actually do the engineering or you know, and costs keep going up, I, it may not work out, but it seemed that it would be something that would be worthwhile to at least look into to see one, is there interest in the village? Two, figuring out what the overall costs and what the cost share would be and see if it's something that makes sense for, for Middlesex. Uh, and quite quite honestly, at least from my seat, you know, even if you can't get 100% of the way there, but you can look at the incremental cost of getting to a stop point that you can upsize things to that stop point today that leave it open mm -hmm. for the future. You know, I think that's something you you had alluded to that in some yeah. of your comments. You know, I think I think just coming to that with an open mind and seeing what is available for funding, because I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's struggling these days. And the more you ask uh, residents to, to burden, um, you know, it's a pretty tough conversation. But uh, I absolutely from my seat uh, recognize that, uh, you know, while this opportunity is is in front of us, we should be exploring options to capitalize even if it's just to a stop point for the future okay um the other uh, oh sorry go ahead so is this going to be a metering system like how are you going to how are you going to control what everybody gets for water are you going to be metering each home yeah to install the meter in that's the normally what happens is if there's a meter um uh, when we st when we started the uh, weights field one, it was a they just you signed up for X amount and you just paid that amount you know based on however many ERUs you had, um, and then they started they finally put in meters and and are finally um, building on what your actual use is, which is what you have. I think we should remember. I think we would become if we did it, we would become a user. So we would either pay or pay a diminished rate or something, depending on what, what kind of deal we get. But, you know, um, it, I think the difference is it really reduces the potential cost in the moment for the um, taxpayers, for the townspeople throughout. Um, but I think we should remember we're creating a product which people pay for. Um, and it's like, for example, at the filling station, we have a well that was when it was drilled, it was supposed to yield 200 gallons a minute, and it may still. But you would never want to, you would never be able to pass any environmental standards because it's next to the railroad, which is a pollutant, and it's next to what was a filling station. So. Yeah, you know, the environmentalists are going to go, don't touch it. And um, I mean, we filter it and all that kind of stuff for the filling station, but we would never want to use that for this kind of a thing. Um, and that's why, we, that's why up above, we could be a user, we could be a, a maker. And one other thing, I, I just did this the other day. When I brought this up, I was thinking about down here along you too. Yes. But depending on where we put our storage, we can go down to the brook road from there. Now, it may not be feasible, but it's high enough um, that it could reach other parts of the town. Okay. Um, in the interest of moving things along, yes? Did Who's going to be collecting revenue for this? I don't think we're there yet. I mean, like, I mean, because I'm wondering, like, is it going to pass? Yeah, no, no, no. We are nowhere near. We are just at the point about the survey. So we're just, like, surveying people. So don't even start worrying about that. You don't have to worry about that. You'll, yeah, you'll be retired by then. Um, okay, so thank you. I think in the interest of us being late and we're way behind, um, I think that it's great if you want to go ahead. I don't think we need to move on this. This is your choice to make this survey. We don't have to approve it, I don't think. 
The survey, when we, again, when we talked about it before, the survey should come from the town. It shouldn't come from the galaxy of yes. Right, right, right. This is the yeah. this is the town doing this. I mean, if you like the, I mean, I think the planning commission's meeting next week. If you want them to do it, you know, we could put it together and send it out and ask folks about it. If you want to do it as, you know, the select board or on behalf of the town for the village, that's up to you. It, um, if I, that's, I believe that we approved the survey prior to just being the, the sending out the survey. We just wanted eyes on it to approve what goes out. Yeah. That was that was my recollection, but that was a year ago, and things have changed since then. So, um, do we want to make a uh, do do you, would you prefer that the select board sends it out, or that that um, Sandy would prefer that? Yeah, I mean, in in some ways, I I agree with her. It makes it look like it's you know coming from a you know the town. I think the town should send. Yeah. Okay. So Sandy, maybe um, if you want to uh, send us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just, have the survey. I could work with Sarah and figure out how to get the survey. I mean, it would probably, and I think some folk, yeah, to get it out, send it out, who the people are, and that it would be sent to. And it would just be, they'd have to to fill it out by hand. I don't think we need to, I don't think it makes sense to try and do this electronically. I don't even know everybody's email, so no. Okay, so we won't move anything tonight because we still want to see it, the final copy. Okay, great. All right, so thank you. Thank you, Russ, for coming. Um, so we're thank next you, with Sandy still appointing a town voter to fill the vacancy on the Planning Commission action likely. We have another one. We have Betsy Davis. Did I send that to you? Uh, Betsy Davis also? Yes. Okay. So is there only one opening? Yes. Sandy? Um, yeah, there is one opening. Um, one of our members um, stepped down. She needed to be working on some matters with the school, and that conflicted with planning commission, her volunteering on the planning commission. And um, as you know, the select board makes, if there's an open seat, the select board makes an appointment to fill out the remaining term. And I honestly don't know how much longer that term is um so okay and so we had the interest from that that new fellow in town All right i sent that to the board yeah and then i also have uh sandy said i should send you a short write-up about me for the select board so here it is while i'm a native of the district of columbia i've lived at 575 shady Road road in middlesex for over 35 years i moved to vermont as i value the rural quality of, of the state and the can-do attitude of vermonters when i first arrived in vermont I worked in the state police crime lab. It is not, was not always easy being a full, first full-time female civilian employee in the lab, but it was a great education. After taking time to start a family, I worked for over 20 years in the Washington Central School District, first at Rummy, then at U32. Helping children on all levels is one of my favorite things to do. And that I am now mostly retired. It would be nice to get back to Middlesex by serving on the Planning Commission. Thank you for your consideration. That's Betsy's. That's Betsy. Okay. And then the other... Was and he's new in sort of new in town. Yes, he moved here in the past year. Yeah. Did you just say the names. Robert Redder. He lives in Andy Emerson's old house. The building yeah. the war zoned it, and then he moved. And did everyone read his introduction to himself? Yeah. Okay. So, is there a possibility, Sandy, that we could appoint one person and have the other person be like a backup, or does that not work on the planning commission? No. I have no idea. I don't think so. We don't have alternates. Okay, you don't have alternates. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I, I sort of was thinking this new person is showing some interest, and maybe that's a nice way they sent their letter in. Um, I mean, I like Betsy, too. I, I, I think both of them are probably good candidates. Did and is, say she's not a resident, though? No. Like, does she have to be? No, she, she is a resident. I think she, did she say she originated from D.C.? Uh, yes. She's not a resident of D.C. right now. No, no, she's yeah, like 30 years. She lives on Shady Row. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought maybe I misunderstood what you said, but. So I was, I was um, sort of inclined to, you know, approve this new person who showed some interest in being involved in the town um, and making them feel welcome in the town. Is that Ritter? Yeah. Um, but that's just my opinion. Anyone else have any other opinions? I mean, I hate it that we have two, you know, people who are interested, and you can only give one person the job. Peter, do you have any comments? 
Well, I really don't. They both sounded like good candidates to me. And fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know either one of them. So I'm fine with either one. Do you have any interest or care? I don't happen to know either. I know Betsy. Candidate. I don't know the other person um, at all. You do know Betsy? Yeah. I, yeah. She's a totally nice person. I could get behind both sides of that coin. Somebody who's lived in town for ever. Um, they know uh, the history of the town, you know, what its plan's been this whole this whole time. Um, I also can get behind, you know, somebody that's new and, and has activity. I think if I had to lean one way, I would go with the long-term resident. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. Zara, any thoughts from you? I don't know either person either. Um, uh, you know, it, it is, it's a toss up. It's re it really, it really is hard. Has Betsy been involved in other things over the last 30 years in town? Yeah. I mean, she was helping with voting today. She's, she said, um, active citizen. Yep. I would say, yep. She worked for many years at U32. Um, I was just trying to find this other guy's, um, yeah, I'm looking through my emails. Can do you? Oh, you. Yeah, you don't have to. I can read it, Sarah. Okay. Okay. Um, Rob and Nancy Redder arrived here in January 2023, because what other month would one choose to move to Vermont? Rob is a semi-retired software engineer which is to say unemployed over 40 in an industry of overpaid children. He worked among them for a while and then was given a charge of small herds. No one was seriously injured, which he attributes to desk jockey lifestyles and a general lack of martial arts training. Though on paper, that'd be his teamwork skills and the natural leadership ability. Rob noticed that people around here care about their community to agree unheard of in the vast desert suburbs of his youth. He'd like to play even a small part in keeping Middlesex distinct from suburban sprawl. If impact is mostly made by those who show up, then it seems to Rob like it's about time he showed up to help with what needs doing. That's Rob's. Oh. Oh. He might be a comedian on the right. planning commission. So is there a motion to uh, move to? Um, move. OK, you move what? Uh, I move that we uh, appoint Rob Ritter. That we appoint Rob Ritter. Oh, OK. Is there a second? OK, hearing none. Is there another? Well, I'll second it. OK, is there another um, motion? I would. I would nominate uh, Betsy and move to to support her candidacy. Okay. Is there a second for Betsy? Yeah. Okay. Great. So, all right. All those in favor of Rob, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Okay. And all those in favor of Betsy, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. So Betsy Davis, congratulations. You are the next planning commission. And Rob Redder, thank you very much. There will be other opportunities for you, Rob, to be, in, to be a participant in the town. So please don't give up. There's more out there. OK. Thank you, Sandy. Um, we are now. 35 minutes behind, and it's appointing additional town voters Scott Gurley and Sue Warren to the town rub subcommittee, plus Zara, repeat those names. Hilton Deer and Steve Martin. Okay. Hilton and Hil Dyer. Hilton Dyer and Steve Martin. Dyer. Okay. Um, so, uh, and then we're going to have a subcommittee update. So shall we just vote on appointing those additional members, and then we can hear an update? Does that sound good? So okay, moved. is there a motion? Okay, there's a motion from Vic. Whoops, I better take notes on this. Um, hold on there, Zara. Okay, you seconded it? Okay. So let me just find my Word document again. Here it is. 
Okay. Whoops. These Max. Okay. Max. Like a Macintosh computer. I'm not used to. I have to pull it up. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I will just add the notes. Whoops. Add notes later about. Add notes about. Let's see. I said, did I say Betsy Bishop? <clears throat> That's not who I meant. What's Betsy Davis? Betsy Davis, yeah. And Rob Redder. Okay, and who moved and seconded in Betsy and Rob? I moved Betsy and okay. Sarah or Peter seconded. Okay, so and Randy moved um, Betsy, Zara seconded. Vic moved, Rob, Liz seconded. Um, Vic voted for Rob, Randy, Z, and Peter voted for Betsy. Okay. So um, Vic moved that we appoint Hilton. Scott Gurley, Sue, Sue Warren, Hilton Dyer, Steve Martin. And who seconded? Zara. I did. All those in favor of appointing said people? Aye. 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 Okay, aye. aye. Great. Okay. Um, Zara, update. I'll be very quick. Um, we have 18 terrific members on the road committee. Um, they are all so dedicated after our first meeting, they wanted to meet the week after. Um, because oh. we do have such a large crew um, on Thursday, we are breaking out into four groups. Uh, one to focus on immediate needs, one to focus on um, what, what we could put together for the future. Obviously climate change is a thing and things are gonna keep changing. Um, one to find funding um, for these wonderful things that we want to purchase or buy or improve. And then the other to um, do outreach among the community because it's so important to make um, the middle sex community members feel safe and heard and understood um, with what they need. So I already, as you probably saw on Front Porch Forum, did put out one informational post I got a lot of great feedback back from the community. Um, obviously the road crew has done an incredible job uh, grading our roads, um, fixing things. So I think people are a lot happier in town. And I also wanna give a shout out to Vic who has been an absolute champ um, attending all the meetings that we've had and, and being there to answer questions. Um, and the, the last thing that I will say is that a big part of this committee that we've all agreed on is that we wanna support emotionally and physically our road crew so that they're not getting beat, it, beat up on Front Porch Forum. And as we can continue to communicate with the community that they'll know to email me with any questions or, or issues and I'll forward it to the correct people. Great. All righty. Anything else for that update, Zara? Need more? No. <laughs> Just making sure. On Thursday, so I'll have more information great. That. Awesome. Thank you for that great update. And now we are only 25 minutes behind. And it's the highway department update. The discussion of Wood Road conditions and improvements action possible. And I know we have a guest from Wood Road, John Rahel. Thank you. But we're gonna let um, first Eric give us a road update. Um, and uh, let me get my notes ready here, Eric. Hold on. Don't talk yet. Okay. Eric, road update. Um, grading is getting close to completion. Um, we've got a couple more roads to do yet um, for the first round. Uh, Equipment-wise, we have um, both our big dump trucks are broke down right now. Um, oh. One is a transmission sensor or a bolt shift, and the other, I believe, is an injector. It's skipping a one cylinder, and they're both at the dealer right now. So inje injector, and what's the other one? Transmission? Transmission. Yeah. That sounds expensive. Just, just 
saying. Might not be. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, okay. one of them's under warranty, so that... Okay. So since both are, do what what else do we have for dump trucks? We don't. So, we don't. <laughs> So we can't be dumping anything right now. Okay, so no dumping for now. I mean, the, the uh, Kenworth could be as simple as a, there's three O-rings mm -hmm. around the injector. Mm -hmm. One goes for coolant, one goes for fuel, okay. one goes for exhaust. And if one of those let goes, it lets uh, uh, oil into the, uh, into the, into the box. The other one is a sensor. Yes. They don't know to, don't know how much a sensor is. They have to pull the uh, valve body out of the transmission to get to it. Okay. And um, is it is the road open yet for big big we trucks? Taken, yeah, we haven't taken the signs down yet. But it is open. Okay. Could we take those down this week? Yeah, it'll be down this week. Okay. Now By open for what is the word we're looking huh? for? By Large. Time today, well, I didn't know because oh, ten ton overweight. Yeah, it will be. Or the overweight. roads are not posted anymore. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Do we have ETA from the dealership on either of those two trucks? They just got down there today, yesterday afternoon, okay. and then this morning. So no. I will touch base with them at the end of the week. If one of them is definitely being looked at on Thursday. I'm not sure about the other. And you got, don't let me steal your thunder. No. We got your uh, chipper, okay. rented chipper. And yeah, we oh. chipped today, all day today. A lot of that stuff on center okay. will be gone, except for the big pieces. How big a piece can that take? 12 inch, but we're going to be able to pick it up to put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's pretty small pieces, but it, it, what's anything more than that? It just it don't, it don't take it. How's everything going with um, Dirt Tech? They're supposed and to start on Monday. Okay. And where are they starting? Uh, Macy Road. What? Macy. Macy Road. Yeah. Can I just ask something? Is it sure. possible that Dirt Tech has so many pieces of equipment and so many workers that we will see them on different roads at the same time? Or is this one job at a time? No, I, I would imagine once they get rolling, they'll probably be a more than one. Okay. They're doing the intersections. Okay. Uh, uh, they're trying to stay away from the bus routes as much as possible for right now. Okay. Yeah, because they're going to be having, like, road closures and signs and what stuff. What is that, the 18th school gets out or something like that? Something like that, yeah. And we're also waiting to hear back on some uh, hydraulic studies, so they're working around that, too. Okay. we got, what, two? We have two back. And those two were East Hill and Lower Sunnybrook. And that has to do with um, what? Culverts. Size okay. of the culverts. Okay, for the hydraulic studies, we'll tell you what size culvert yes. you need. Gotcha. Yes. Yep. I'll give you options. They'll yep. give you like a. Okay. Cool. All right. So, um, anything else before we uh, move to the specifics of Wood Road? That's it. Okay. Great. So we have John Rayhill here, and John, I think that you ha are bringing up some concerns about Wood Road and potentially the work that's going to be done by FEMA. Is that why you're here, or maybe you could tell us why you're here? Um, yes, that's a and welcome. summary. And uh, thank you. And uh, I come with some degree of frustration because, as Mr. Hood knows, I've been uh, suggesting things that could be done to improve Wood Road well before the flood. And uh, uh, he directed me to talk to Vic uh, after the flood, and I suggested we go for a ride. Vic, you were too busy. You guys are overwhelmed. Peter said, you should come to the select board and meeting. So I came last fall and you said, don't worry about Wood Road, it's going to be all subcontracted out, it's going to be engineered and under FEMA and we're going to take care of it. Um, 
<clears throat> that didn't happen. Uh, and so we learned that the work was already uh, not only designed, so to speak, but uh, contracted. So we really had no chance to share our observations on the part of Woodrow that uh, has needed fixing and certainly the flood exacerbated. So <clears throat> that's the past. We want to move forward. We, Steve uh, Martin was uh, very generous and came out to meet with a group on Wood Road to explain what we were getting for our $150,000. And uh, I think that was a great two-way conversation because he learned the areas of Wood Road. I think we copied you in our... Did you get a letter from us? Uh, I, don't I don't think so, no. But can you give me the date that Steve came to Wood Road? Last Monday. And that would be what, May? It wasn't Monday, it was Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday week. <clears throat> last, last Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. So uh, that was great to, to talk to somebody who uh, was interested in the details. And um, the major focus, unfortunately, in, in this letter, which I'll give you right now, um, I thought we sent that to you, but uh, maybe I thought Terry... Did, did, didn't Terry Solomon contact you about that? Uh, Terry Solomon was at my house. But he didn't give you a copy of that. He, all he said was, we're coming. There's going to okay. be a whole bunch of us with pitchforks. That's me. <clears throat> um, so um, we, we identified uh, six areas of Wood Road that need attention and had before the, the flood. And uh, Steve was, uh, we, we said, well, can we fix some of these areas as part of the funding, even though we're a little late, it's already been yeah. bid out. He said, well, maybe let me talk to Eric. Uh, some of it is classified as maintenance, and the select board wants to separate yeah. maintenance from construction. So one thing we want to find out is who do we address to try to resolve these longstanding issues. Um, one of them is the bridge, which is a sort of a simple thing. We've got potholes there uh, all year long, and uh, Eric, you had some ideas for improving those, so I think that'll be uh, relatively simple. Um, we have two nasty mud spots going up the hill that are relatively small, and uh, this year's uh, delivery of uh, gravel helped a great deal. Um, we're a little concerned that if we just put gravel over the whole road and don't address the underlying problems, we're painting a turd. And uh, we've always heard from the highway guys that you can't just put topping on, you got to fix the under. Yeah. And so we're hoping maybe as rather than sprinkle the stuff everywhere, we focus on those areas where we know it's soupy every mud season. Mm -hmm. I lost a bumper uh, this year. and made me even more unhappy because uh, the ruts were so deep. There's an area in front of Linda Kemp's house where the water goes right into her kitchen. What? And we all know that the road has gone up uh, over the years. We add gravel every year, and so the road gets higher, not lower. Steve said that's easy enough to address. We just have to grade away from the, from the house. So he, he was uh, encouraging that that wasn't a a big problem, but it's been there for a while and, and uh, really does need to be addressed. So adding more four inches of topping is only going to make it worse. Yeah. That's not Can, I stop, can yeah. I stop you right there for a minute just to get some clarification? You said Linda Kemp, was Kemp. that the name? Uh, <clears throat> not Linda Kemp, uh, Iona. Probably. Linda Iona or Iona, Iona Kemp. Kemp? Okay. okay. Uh, Gallagher. Did we... Did we receive communications last year, and is this the same property that uh, we were provided some photo and video of um, that was coming to the entryway? Same property? Probably. Okay. I don't remember that. Then, then her brother was on Zoom last fall. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I'm, I'm putting the pieces together in my head properly. So I think she's the only person. That, that's the wood house, the original house on the road. <clears throat> and... Uh, it's on a piece of ledge, and uh, you know it's not a great situation. You're not gonna. I mean, it's, was that it's not tricky. the Gallagher place? That was the Gallagher place. Right. She's 
uh, daughter of Gallagher. Okay. Um, so that one, we hope, can get addressed before we add more gravel on. Uh, there is most of the focus of the work, apparently, is, is jackhammering out the ledge and enlarging the culvert, maybe changing where the ditching goes so it doesn't go across the road there. Uh, there's some question whether that's a good idea in several people's minds. Eric, who's seen two washouts, and it's not at all clear that that's going to be easy, uh, but that's where the money's going. Then what doesn't seem to be dealt with is at the top of the hill, it gets very flat, and it's been just <coughs> awful with mud, thick and and it seems to be no place for the water to go, so it's hard to this imagine. Is, this is away from Iona's house at this point. Now this we're in a different spot. Up, above the steep part where it gets flat. Okay. Uh, and again, Whose house is that? There's a whole bunch of houses. Give us one. Uh, name one, he says. Uh, before Linda Buckley's. Okay. And after... Uh, Jessup. Jacobs and Jessup's. Okay. It's all pretty flat there, yeah. but the water doesn't seem to get off there, so uh, okay. that may be just a maintenance thing. Okay, and what happens there? Uh, it gets really muddy? It gets really tough in mud season and potholes all summer because the water doesn't get away. So we're, we're hoping that there's some, something we can try different. And then at the bottom of Wood Road, before it gets to Worcester... Uh, Wait, hold on. But, and I'll give you a copy of our. Okay, driver. so then bottom of what? At the end of Middlesex is part of Wood Road. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the, there's quite a drop off on the east side, but the, over the years the trees have grown up so the water can't get off the drop off. And the result, uh, Eric, I think you probably could verify this the water runs down and then had a huge washout at the bottom where the water reaches the low spot. So it washes out the road. Instead of draining on the east side, it washes down the road. Right. And again, that might be a, a simple fix. But we're, we're hoping, and Steve was encouraging, that maybe some money from either the FEMA funding or otherwise can address these problems so we're not just fixing one culvert, which we don't think is going to fix any of these other parts, uh, and may be very difficult and result in cost overruns and love to talk with people about exactly how that's going to work because they're in, in I think we have to keep the culvert and maybe I'm getting ahead of myself but because uh, I wasn't involved in, in the design of this but I think we have to keep the culvert that goes across the road uh, and then we're trying maybe to, to uh, direct some of the water on the west side of the road, which involves going under three or four driveways, uh, and then where? So I think th there's a question of what that's going to do for the road uh, to improve things. But we're, we're just uh, hoping that there can be some uh, specific dialogue with with Steve. We're delighted that he's involved because he's an experienced. He's our ex commissioner, right? Yes. yes. And uh, so we couldn't ask for a uh, better person to be working with. But we we'd like to see some work done to address these long standing problems. And if we think we're gonna, if we ex if the roads are beautiful right now. They haven't been this good in a long time. But I think we can thank Mother Nature for some of that. We haven't had rain in a while. So if we expect a different result by doing the same thing we've done before, I think we're kidding ourselves. And hopefully we can, part, I, I'm part of this road committee, and I'm excited about um, experimenting with some things that uh, change some of the long-standing problem areas. Okay. So is there um, hope Eric and Vic, that some of the work that Tech Dirt will be doing, Dirt Tech will be doing, can address these six problems? Uh, I don't know. I, I did not see the, uh, the uh, so would you happen to have a copy of that? Yeah. I'll give away my original. 
kind of make sure that we're... Yeah, well, here, here uh, I'm going to take this back. There's, there's the, the six areas that we listed. Yeah. Yeah, it would be great to just make copies of that for the group before, or... Because I don't think I've, I don't think I didn't remember getting that. The, oh, I'm sorry. Paul's iPhone has a question. Paul, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, you guys, it, it's more just of a, a full disclosure for everybody. Um, John, and I commend you for, for bringing this to the board. One thing I would just advise everybody is when I know that road very well. When you when we start redirecting water, concentrating things in a different direction, we, we take a problem from one area and, and put it on another. Now, that's all well and dandy if water is, is physically exiting the roadway and, and going on to private property where it can be you know, soaked up by the land or, or hit another watershed. Um, just be mindful that the town may open up a can of worms when it comes to changing water directions and and where we send that because ultimately we concentrate water send it in a different direction um that that potentially the the infrastructure below that may not be able to handle um you know a a, a larger quantity of water um so more just for everybody on the road the town you know residents um i think all good intentions here but just be mindful that certain things may may require more than just say hey let's Let's change the culvert, move it over there, and and now those problems are gone. But all of a sudden, we've opened up new problems. So just be mindful of of that for everybody. Thanks, Paul. Um, Sarah has a question. I'm sorry. Yes, Sarah. I just wanted to say that um, I both John and Paul um, are going to be likely on the immediate fix team. Um, so I'm hoping that the the road committee can really help out what Wood Road because that is. Um, the priority that's come across uh, time and time again. Um, and I did have Ken Davis uh, write me about that home where water was flowing right right to the door. Okay. I mean, it, it would be great if we were able to use Dirt Tech knowing that they're hired to do specific work, right, related to the flood. Um, if you're going to if you're going to attach it to the flood and FEMA, that's great. That's what I mean. Yeah, that'd be great, and we certainly will try to do that. Steve yep. is always trying to do that. But if we can't, then the select then board's going to have to come up with some money. Yeah. Maybe Peter has an idea where that would come from. Well, Zara's um, Zara's group is a whole funding group, so they're going to tell they're, us how to find the get, money if, yeah, if they're gonna get, FEMA can. Uh, okay. Free money. So, um, John, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, just thank you for letting us bring it to your attention. And we look forward to talking, hopefully, now that the dust has settled a little bit from the media. As Vic says, we're in a uh, crisis management mode. Mm -hmm. Hope we can move beyond that. And uh, some of these things may be relatively simple. Uh, Steve made reference to getting together with Dirt Tech to get their ideas, and I think, as Paul says, he shares my concern exactly. We're talking about three-foot culverts and two-foot ditches. There's ledge that people may not be aware of that is going to be very difficult to clean out. Um, I don't think we can get rid of culverts that all that need repair. So. Uh, if we could redirect some of that money in a constructive way, we could maybe deal with a lot of these things without extra money. That would be my, my hope. Certainly, it's all of our hopes. Yep. So part of it is the how much flexibility we have, and I don't have a clue as to how that works. So just with that conversation, I'm sure everybody's mind goes there, but with just making sure that any changes we make to the proposal that went out and was procured as far as the project to Dirt Tech, that we follow all guidance that FEMA has regarding change orders or, or anything like that. Because what I wouldn't want to see is them throw up a project because we've made changes, spent money differently, but we didn't follow proper procurement efforts. So. 
Yeah, and I, I just want to be very conscious of that. I think if you're going to uh, do the quote unquote change order, that it comes in front of the select. Yeah. Okay. Don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what the select board wants. I think you know. I think yeah. That can be done. That's just a matter of uh, Steve recognizing that with Eric. And yeah, and I think at this point, you know, there's been enough back and forth with our FEMA reps that if we have questions about exactly what they need for a change like that, again, we can make those phone calls and say, this is what we think we need to do. Does this meet your, your needs, your requirements? So. Okay. And I see that a few more folks from Wood Road have joined us in person. Yep. Um, yes, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul, go right ahead. Yep. No, and I, I don't mean to take up any more time. Just Vic and Eric, I, I know uh, during town meeting, you guys mentioned that the road crew didn't have a schedule or, or a game plan right now. Do you guys have anything formal? And the only reason I ask in the interest of potentially doing some things ahead of dirt tech that I, I can think of some things that John is saying that the, the road crew could do easily and cheaply, but what I don't want to do is impact what they may have planned already. Is is there some wiggle room within the town schedule now that dirt tech is doing work so we can bring that um, to our road committee meeting? Um, I'm just curious of that in, in regards to the road committee. We have wiggle room, um, which, but we don't have equipment right at the moment. The dump trucks are broken. We don't have an excavator. We don't have a truck. They don't have the excavator, and they don't have two trucks. They have a grader and a backhoe. They have a grader and a backhoe. That's what we're up against right now, Paul. Yeah. That sounds good. I, I when I think about going towards the Worcester line, just thinking about cutting shoulders and stuff, it it could be a pretty simple fix with the grader and picking up material yep. and getting water to sheet off the road the way it needs to. So again, I. I just wanted to, to be be up front and, and be respectful of what you guys might already have planned. So before we make suggestions on behalf of the road crew. Um, so we have so a couple, we have more, couple people more people from Woodrow. Wood I would, I would like, like you to have, have an opportunity, opportunity to say, say something, something if you'd, if you'd like, like um, while, we're, while still we're still on this agenda, on this agenda item. item. Um, were you um, here, here to, to hear what John, John said? I wasn't really, really looking, looking over, over here. here. I did not hear John, but I've heard John. We've discussed this several times. He gave times. us the six, six um, problem areas, areas of the road. road. And, and we talked, talked a bit about um, whether, whether or not when FEMA and when dirt, dirt tech comes in, in will, they will they be able, able to address some, some of those as they relate to blood repair? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Should I shout? Okay. Um, okay. okay, I just, I just was saying, saying that, that uh, Mr. Ray gave, gave us the six, six problem areas, areas of, that, that, that have been identified, identified by the folks on Wood Road, Road. Um, um, and then and, uh, and whether, whether or not our contracting, contracting company that's working, that's working with, with FEMA, FEMA, with our with FEMA, FEMA dollars, dollars, if, um, if, um, if they, they will be able, able to address some, some of those six, six trouble spots, spots that can, that can get included, included in the FEMA, FEMA repair. repair. And that, and that will be something, something that, that these folks, folks will be talking about, about with, with Dirt Tech, tech to, to see if there's, there's you, know, you know, they, 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 they fall, fall in line, line with, with um, um, the existing plans, plans exactly. exactly. Um, and, again, and again, because, because FEMA is very, very specific, specific about the work plan and the dollar and the problem, like we're kind of tied to Okay. What they've already, what they've already, already sort, of sort of said, said. yes. Um, but, we but we know that some, that some of these, these things, things are flood related, related, so we're hopeful we can cross over with some, some of those. Uh, Beth. And then just 126 Wood Road, um, and I agree with what John probably said because I helped him write that okay. whole memo. Uh, we are of the same mind that the road has been worse than it's ever been. Flood or no flood, it's been uh, bad even beyond where, the, where you saw the flood had given problems in the, during the event in July. So uh, the, the road has been bumpy, um, muddy in the past, but muddy is this year. And I think that uh, I'm sure John had talked about just the general maintenance of crowning it, get water off the road, and then uh, the major problem areas also, which um, we think, we hope, that uh, this contract can help take care of those problem areas through FEMA or not. 
communicate with less. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, yeah, yeah, I just probably, probably agree with what John said. What he, what he said. <laughs> so, um, so would I understand, understand that, that given, given what, what these folks have said, said what, what you have, have Eric, Eric and, and, Vic, and, and looking, looking at this, this that, that you would have conversations, conversations with Dirk Tech, Tech about, about these specific, specific areas? areas? Well, I don't, I don't, or how does that work? If, if that happened, but, but I would but think, I would think that, that, that uh, <clears throat> As Paul Sermonara said, I think we'll focus on uh, Eric and, and, and ask him to uh, directly uh, uh, either go with the grading process up there and actually uh, be right there uh, with the town crew to address these, these issues. And hopefully we'll have time and, and have some spare time, uh, you know, from doing other stuff. stuff. And, and uh, uh, to, really to really focus, focus on, on uh, what's, what's happening, happening uh, above, above Ben's, Ben's place, place up through, through to, to uh, the turnaround uh, around, uh, for, uh, what turns around, around uh, and, and, uh, and uh, Worcester. And, and I would add that we'd be happy to participate in that in case we had, you know, you know when you're the CD center comes up here, Eric, and uh, one of the things, things that's been the frustrating is that nobody can talk to So. so Happy to be involved as much as can be constructive in these planning, planning meetings. Just love, love it so much, much men encourage the crew to try to uh, stretch, stretch that, that money to address some of the other long term problems. Like, 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 Sorry. Okay. okay. Um, anything, anything else? else? Do you have any other, other comments you'd like to make about the roads? That wasn't covered in the no. six points of the paperwork time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the communication that you just mentioned okay. is really key. I mean, because maybe something's going to happen next year. And what do we do then to tell you that, hey, we're, we're stalled here without making it sound like we're, we don't think you're doing your job? We do. But it's just like we want to be able to have a communication avenue or something so that we can register it. So I believe the communication avenue is Vic, the road commissioner, like that, that if you have, you know, that you should reach out to him. Is that correct? Like you're not Unless calling your guys. They're, they're calling, yeah, okay. Oh, that's it's FEMA. And then we have a FEMA project manager, Steve. Right. So are you still the person but we contact even if FEMA is the one taking care of it? I would, I would you say. You can start there. I mean, it's it's not like I'm going to say, oh, I'm not going to talk about that with you because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll talk with Steve. You yeah. might not you might not have me out there, but you, I'll, I'll talk with Steve. Or, I talk with this guy every day, every day of the week, every morning. Okay. And so he'll know if you tell me. I will know. You will know. Okay. Um, since you have spoken, do you mind if I get your names, please? Uh, yes. I am Benjamin Carlson, 152 Woodrow. Okay, hold on. Okay, so. Um, I'm sorry, you're uh, at the same address? Same yeah. address, okay. yes. I'm her grandson. Okay. All righty. Uh, anything else about this topic of roads? All righty. Thank Thanks, you all John. For your attention. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. And I'll get you a copy of this, which I apologize okay, great. for not getting in your hands already. Thank you. I think we already have a copy of that at home. Okay, we didn't, we the didn't board get didn't the get it. Board, apparently. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Where it was yep. supposed to go. We have uh, 20 minutes till the polls close. If anybody wants to vote, you should vote now. Did you vote, Liz? I, I voted. Yes, I did remember. Okay. And also, I know you guys have a meeting and you have an executive session plan, but I'm going to need that these, I'm going to need uh, the select board members on hand to help count these ballots and the chip them off. At what time? Seven. Okay. Thank you. We're going to try to whip through some things. Um, okay. So thank you all for coming. Um, you can stay. You don't have to leave. But um, we were here just for the road.
Okay, great. Um, so a quick Welch Park update. Peter, you sent us those documents. Those aren't anything that we're going to sign today. Do you want to get, just give us a little quick update on that? Yeah, so what these, what these documents represent is draft documents from the attorney that Welch Park hired to basically dissolve, uh, dissolve Welch Park. My recommendation is, and I hope you'll all agree, that we need to have our attorney review these documents. Uh, I read them over uh, as carefully as I could. The only thing I found that I think is missing from the documents, and I think it needs to be in there, probably uh, not in the deeds themselves, but in the uh, in the uh, agreement to dissolve, uh, agreement for dissolving Wedge Park Association. I just like to see some language in there that we've agreed to take over responsibility for the road. Um, I think that's important. That's an important part of the deal, and it should be in the uh, and it should be in the agreement. Other than that, making sure that uh, these deeds in this document uh, represent, you know, what what we expect and what we wanted. And uh, it seems to me I spend most of my time not on the not on the deeds, but on the document itself, uh, which looked fine to me. But uh, I do think we need to turn it over to our attorney. Uh, Benderson uh, has a copy of this. Uh, so, you know, everybody's in the loop looking it over and having their legal people look it over. Uh, then we'll have final final documents and this long festering wound will be uh, exercised for once and for all. So, uh, yeah. My recommendation is, is to uh, is to send it to uh, our attorney for his review and uh, agreement. Okay. Any comments on that? I agree with Peter. Okay, I read too. through. I got through probably eighty five percent of it. I didn't quite finish it, but um, yeah, I'm in agreement with what Peter just okay. said. I don't think we need to move anything. Just yeah, let's just send it next to the um, to the attorney. Um, the other thing, too, just on Welch Park was <laughs> I approved there. So there were apparently two insurance policies. OK. OK, so there's like a liability and then directors and officers. So I signed them. We're going to pay them. And OK, yeah. And so maybe we'll get reimbursed once this. ends, right as soon as as soon as this is finalized those policies will be canceled and there will be a return premium but my recommendation is and this this is to keep people moving towards signing these documents and getting it done that we send out bills to uh, Carl and, and Benderson for their participation rather than have the have the town uh, wait and then when we get money back we can distribute it back to them as is appropriate and there's a bill in Okay, great. Okay. Um, cool. All righty. So that's Welch Park. Next thing is correspondence. Um, so we did have, I had a little correspondence, um, as did Randy. Randy, do you want to tell us about correspondence with Sam uh, from the road, from what's the name of the road again? Mead Road. Mead Road. Uh, yeah. Samantha Bowden, Stephen Dennis asked. Uh, to meet with uh, Liz and myself to discuss, um, you know, their options for Mead Road. Um, during that meeting, they disclosed some additional events on uh, video. Uh, one was a flag hanging from a, a tree uh, directly on the road, which obstructs the view of the road, um, as well as uh, Mr. French. Um, you know, uh, having additional activity within the roadway, um, even after the town had sent their letter. Um, so they were just asking, you know, uh, realistically what, what they could do. Um, as part of that meeting, uh, Liz reached out to, um, Evelyn and Zach and basically just asked them to take the flag down um, and I believe to stop touching the road. Stay out of the road yeah. per our agreement. Um, 
Uh, we then received a return email communication from Evelyn asking to see the video um, and uh, asked that it go through their lawyer. Yeah, that, and, I, and then I asked Sam, and Sam said she didn't uh, feel the need to share the video and that the flag was still up. Okay. Did you see the flag? I haven't gone there to see the flag, no. Okay. No, I mean, well, yeah, okay. No, I just. Oh, I think we saw a photo of it. Didn't we see a picture? Yeah, it was. Of it? Yeah, we saw it a picture. It was in the one of the videos that we were shown. No, right. my, my. But I haven't bad. seen it in I person. I thought you guys were saying that you. No, no, no. no. Over. Okay. No. Um, my bad. We met them here at the town here hall. Here at town hall. Ago. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, any other correspondence that we've received? I don't think so. When, when was that? Uh, this was, when was this, Randy? I have it on my calendar. Yeah, it would have been... Yeah, good. That's a good idea to put that note in. Um. Really, they were, they wanted to first, they wanted to ask us, Sam and um, Steve wanted to ask us, you know, what, okay. you know, it just keeps happening, and so what can they realistically expect? That's all. No, I'm just checking because oh. in all transparency here, I mean, I didn't correspond, but oh. uh, I went to... Uh, when you were out, I think you could. I think it was Monday, but I went out to check the culvert right on the corner by uh, okay. the guy that built the new house, tore the old one down, the old heart place. And uh, while I was there, I ended up driving down that okay. road, and uh, I uh, met with, or I, I didn't intend to, but she was out there and we talked to her. Who is uh, she? Sam. Okay. For about an hour. Okay. And but I she asked me oh I, I I just emailed you and you were a very quick response which was like two seconds. But anyways, oh I see yeah you did. Yeah. But I didn't think that there was anything that was really you know as far as digging in the road. She asked me about can he do this and it, but it didn't really bother her. I think she said. But I didn't see any song. I didn't see any flag. You didn't so see a flag. The okay, flag it was a yellow flag. The flag, maybe I was, yeah. but I didn't see it. I just okay. didn't see it. Uh, yeah, but okay. I don't know what day you were talking. We met with them on the 23rd uh, here at the town hall. Um, and I think Liz is Okay, so that would have been before, because you went on, what, the 30th? No, you came back on the 30th. Yeah. Well, it was the 23rd. What day of the week was that? It was a that? Tuesday, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, let me look. Okay. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, I didn't see it, but I'm not, not saying it wasn't there. Okay. Um, All righty. Any other correspondence that we haven't um, we've talked about? Okay. All righty. Uh, well, let's see. Um, next is orders. Um, and then we have to move to executive session. Um, do you think we have 10 minutes to do that? Because we, she needs us at 7? I can get you at 7.05. Yeah, okay. If you can get it us at 7.05. Yep. The, uh, the okay. I, I don't have that number. I'm sorry, Sarah. You have this a became number for the personnel? There's just an executive They'll session. They'll invite you, I think, if they want you. Um, yes, do you want to invite? Gonna, yeah. I plan to invite her. Okay. So the other thing, too, is we can go downstairs so that people can vote if we want to just go downstairs to do the executive session? Yeah. Okay. And we can just take the laptop so Zara and Peter can stay on the on the Zoom, and we'll We're take the laptop right down. Idea. Yeah, that's the idea okay. is to go downstairs. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, wait, hold on. It's going to be one day a day if you've got contracts, labor relations, Okay, so we are um, actually. Can we end this meeting so we don't? So Orca can go home and everything, or not? So Orca can go. Orca can go home. You can. What I would do is I would say that there's no there's action no, after. There will be no action after this executive session, so they can turn it off. Yes. And you need to turn off the recording on the Zoom. Okay. And uh, you just need to say when you're what part of one day three said 313 is it contracts labor relations agreements with employees I don't know 
Is it arbitration or mediation? Ending or probable civil litigation or prosecution? The second Confidential attorney-client? Negotiation of real, real estate purchases? I think the, the second one you said, read the first and second again. It would be 1A is contracts, 1B is labor relations agreements with employees. It would fall under labor agreements. Okay. I need the words. Just say VSA 13. Enter executive session to discuss. Okay, we're going to enter executive well, session. We're going to have to take a vote on it. So shall we enter okay. executive session based on 1 VSA 3? Okay, shall we enter executive session 13? Uh, 1 VSA 1B 1B labor relations. Labor relations. relations. So if I go down. What was that word uh, with employees? Labor relations with employees. We'll, we'll figure, I'll figure it out. Okay. With, with the road foreman present. Say? Yes. Yep. Yep. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And we, we have to vote on it. We have to vote on it, Rand, uh, Vic. So all those in favor of going to an executive session, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Okay, and then, um, so this, this meeting is temporarily adjourned, but there will be no more. When you come back out of executive session, yep. give me a time for when you adjourn the meeting. Yep. Uh, I'm going to end the recording. I'm going to turn off the TV.